Right, so welcome to another episode of Can Diagnostics. In today's riveting ex episode, we're going to start to look at a new series of ECU repair, uh, reading and writing, etc. Um, so today's lesson will be quite basic. Um, I'm going to show you how to read this ECU, uh, two different ways mainly. First one, as you can see, we've got it hooked up to the we've got it hooked up to the auto and we're going to read the fault code in this ECU. Um, relatively easy, what you need to do is pairs, grounds, can lines, K lines, L lines, etc. if it needs it. Um, gets more compl complex if it needs to go through a gateway or anything, but we just all we need to do is talk to this module. Um, I'm going to show you, so customer comes in, sends you an ECU and it says it's got a shorted injector driver or the fuel regulator isn't working properly we've changed the sensor five six times we've changed the wiring we've checked the wiring etc etc can only be the ecu so how we're going to rectify that how we're going to check it first things first we need to read the ecu and see if we can um replicate the fault see if we can see that's that same fault code inside the ecu so then once we've fixed it that that fault code should go same as any other repair and we would know if we've got a fix or not. So first things first, th this is a this is this is used fine. Nothing wrong with this ECU anyway, but this is just for tutorial sake. Let me check that you can you can see. So engine control unit. Trouble codes. Obviously we're gonna have a lot of codes because um well, there's nothing connected to the ECU, is there? So, you know, fuel pressure sensors, there's no fuel connected to it. There's no um, turbo actuators or anything like that. There's no, no signals from, from anything except for ignition. So that, that's the first thing we want to do. So let's just say, argument's sake, fuel pressure sensor, that's our fault. Right. So we need to attack this ECU now to find a fuel pressure sensor failure. There isn't one. I might make one yet. Who knows? But... In this episode, it's just going to be reading and the basics of it. So I'm going to bring you a bit further into the ECU. We can come back out of this now and just point out some main features of this ECU. This is a EDC 16 CP instead of an Audi A4 V6 Quattro. Okay, so we've got a bit of a close look at this ECU. So it's going to point out some different features of it and pretty much all ECUs will have this in one variation or another hence why I'm only going to point out some basic objects so this here we look at this as boost transformer so this is going to boost any voltage that's needed some items in the ECU may need 24 volts for argument's sake most of it will only need about 5 volts and um, we've got flash memory over here uh, this little square box here this is an altitude sensor um, over here we've got the injector drivers this relatively big uh, MOSFET here um, is a low voltage isolation so if it's sensor low voltage it can damage ECU stuff so obviously it needs to cut certain items out at that point you know if you've ever got a battery that's down to 8 volts and you might be able to read some ECU some ECUs and you may not be able to read other ECUs um, and you'll have low voltage fault codes this is what's going to be in charge of telling the rest of the stuff look we've got a problem I haven't got enough voltage here um, if we look around the isolation we would see some low current resistors so this essentially is just a very small resistor it's going to sense how much current is being passed through it um, yeah, that makes mind obviously you've got your big capacitors you don't you know you don't really explain what capacitors are you've got some relays a lot of diodes um more memory some ram some rom um okay i'm gonna flip the board over okay so we're on the flip reverse side again some fairly big things to point out here here we've got um the main mcu so the microcontroller unit obviously this controls pretty much everything um, here, this is your main RAM chip, 
okay we've got some of these diodes here we're looking at this is going to be about your 3.3 volt uh, rails or, or supply i should say um and then coming along we've got some this slightly bigger this will be five volts i should think um between the ram and these isolation area this here is your eeprom so this is where all your security data is kept um, and you know basic information about the ecu uh, vin numbers etc uh, power management ic so you know it's pretty self-explanatory as we come up this one here this is your fuel injection driver so this tells the the drive well not drive the things on the other side of the board when and when not to fire um looks over to the right hand side it's some stuff that gets a bit you know it doesn't look like much but uh that's going to be sort of like your boost uh, boost current detection um again other you'll be looking at again for low voltage path and just again a lot more resistors obviously a lot of these resistors will just be going to earth um if anything goes wrong you know you can divert the current just to earth shorts everything out without shorting the main big boys out you know another current resistor the issue is constantly constantly looking at the voltages obviously the issue runs off voltage even can bus is voltage it's just it's, it's you know it's, it's it's variation in different voltages that are going to keep everything on track. It's how information is sent to and from different components, whether that's sensors or whether it's actual MCUs, flash, EEPROMs, different drivers. It's all relatively basic when you look at it. When you start to isolate different areas bit by bit, you will start to be able to look at an issue and say, right, I've got a short to ground every time every time you plug the ECU in, it's frying it's frying the fuse so first thing we're going to start to come in and we're going to start to look at some of the main uh, diodes that are just straight away on the power side of the board we look to see if our main capacitors whether they're shorted out uh, whether they're leaking bulging anything like that we would check the coils this big coil here make sure that's not got too high resistance or going straight to ground etc and um, it's something that takes practice, admittedly. And how do I know what different components are? Again, it's not rocket science. All we're going to do is essentially read the part number on the chip and Google it, and it'll tell you what it is, what it does. Uh, and, uh, nearly everything on this board will fit different applications. You know, these this MCU is not developed especially singly for this board it will go on many other boards it may go in laptops it may go in bleeding helicopters for all we know it doesn't really matter you can put these chips in various different applications but obviously when we pull all together on this pcb we've got an ecu and it makes a car go brum brum so right let's go back to where we was we're saying what did we say we've got a fuel fault fuel pressure sensor fault i think we said um obviously we haven't but we're just making it for a scenario so we've confirmed the customer's complaint we've got a fuel pressure sensor code put this in here fuel pressure sensor right so now we need to start working on the board or do we we don't there's another there's another piece of the puzzle yet and it's probably the most important thing you're going to do with an ecu we're going to back this ecu up so if something terrible goes wrong, if I drop a screwdriver in here and short it out and that MCU starts letting go of the magic smoke, we're fucked, right? So we need another ECU. Now what are we gonna do? We can't just go to the customer and say, yeah, you need another ECU, I'm playing this. You need to take it to AOD and get the ECU reflashed, get it reprogrammed, get it on AODIS, get everything sorted out, get it reconfigured to your vehicle. We can't do that. You need to start reprogramming keys, immobilizers, etc., etc. So before we do anything, same as your computer, if you you know you save your files constantly, don't you? If you're writing a Word document, you don't want to write ten thousand words and then lose it just by being stupid and not saving. So essentially, we're going to control an S on this. We're going to save everything. That's so we're going to go over to KTag next. Um, so we're done with the auto. We can pull the power off from this ECU and put it on the bench with KTag. 
Right, so we are set up with KTAG. Um, very straightforward, as you can see. Just choose the right BDM, put them on the BDM pads, pair the KTAG up and connect it to the laptop. So henceforth, we shall go to the laptop. Right, so we picked our car, okay. Click OK, we're gonna find out which one it is, or the closest. Connect to the ECU, which connections, it just tells you different hardware variations, um, where the BDM pads are. So that's the frame, mine's slightly different, but no drama. And then, if you want to use a ribbon cable, shows you where the BDM pads are, how to do that. Okay, just click OK. Now I know that this is a P96, um, just because obviously I've done this a fair few times now. Um, we're, going to, we're going to back up everything. We're going to back up the microprocessor, the external flash, and the EEPROM. We're going to back up the whole ECU. Okay, so like I said, if there's any issues, um, we can just restore it, back it all up to another ECU or this one if we corrupt any data. So obviously now it's reading that processor. It can take a while depending on how much data there is some some don't have all three some only have an external flash and eprom some don't have an eprom it's stored inside the micro etc etc so i'm going to skip the um flash ahead a little bit okay so we've come to the end of the flash and um, obviously next is the eprom This shouldn't take very long, it's only a small chip, it's not a great deal of data when you compare it to maps. But then once this is finished, it's going to ask us if we want to save the file. Actually, we do. Now, typically, I would save the files individually. Okay, but for the purpose of this, I'm just going to save it as one. Well. Anytime. Okay, so let's put on the desktop. Back up. Save. No. Typically, like I said, I would, but not this time round. So now, we felt we thought the ECU is knackered. We did another one. We've put another ECU on the table. We've connected it up. We've read it, etc. So now. We're going to find the file we had just, open it up, it's going to try to read the ECU again and make sure that the file we have selected is compatible with the ECU. Okay, and it's basically going to do the reverse of what we did just. It's going to push all this data in instead of reading it out of the ECU. So if you was going to map this vehicle, you would have read the flash, sent it off or edited the file yourself. And then when you would restore it, you would write the flash back into it. You wouldn't need to mess with the um, EE primer or anything like that. So we're coming to the end of it and hopefully we should have a successful write. It's a matter of axle.
See? Writing successfully completed. That's not me whinging. That's me dag. Okay then. So, until next time. Ta-da.